Welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland. Titans fans, on today's show, we are going to talk about the biggest story from Titans training camp so far, and it is the Titans rookie class. From top to bottom, they've all been showing out, and I'm going to go rookie by rookie and update you guys on the latest with every single one of them. So from Traylon Burks all the way down to Chance Campbell, examining the Titans star rookie class so far on today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. Let's get it. You are Locked On Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Titans fans, the rookie class has been balling out. It's crazy. It's maybe the most positive start of any of John Robinson's draft classes in the time that he's been the general manager of the Titans. For sure, the best start for a rookie class since I've been covering the team from the 2019 season to now. We're going to go rookie by rookie and get you guys updates on how these guys are doing before we do. do want to let you guys know that today's podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online, available to people worldwide. And they have a special offer for my listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. Also, want to thank you guys for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. If this is your first ever listen, make sure you subscribe on whatever platform you do stream. I am putting out daily, Monday through Friday, free Tennessee Titans content on all platforms from now until next summer, including the Locked On Titans YouTube channel. Subscribe there, smash the notification bell, and throw a thumbs up on the video right now if you're watching. Trying to get this video to a million likes, so do your part, folks. Anyways. Moving into the rookie class. Of course, we are going to start with not only the Titans' first pick in last year's, or in April's draft, but the star of the rookie class so far anyways, Traylon Burks, wide receiver. And I want to bring up something that I saw on, uh, on Wednesday morning. Jason McCourty, former Tennessee Titan, doing good morning football now. He had some critical comments about the Titans or just maybe pessimistic comments that Titans fans don't want to hear about how far the Titans can go this season last week. But this week, he wanted to kind of balance that out. And when they asked around the table at Good Morning Football, training camp buzz that you believe. Well, McCourty did his part. And he talked about Traylon Burks. And how could you not? Jim Wyatt in his uh, mailbag, Titans beat writer in-house, even said night and day, different person, Traylon Burks, from right now compared to those early off-season activities when he was having those conditioning problems. He's been physical. He's been making catches. He's been showing up in team period, making explosive plays. They're even asking him to punt return. Traylon Burks, if you need an update, I've been giving updates on Traylon Burks. For the past week, it feels like. Because every single day, there's a new Traylon Burks did this. It was crazy. Yesterday, it was an awesome post route on Caleb Farley. I mean, at this point, you hate to get overzealous. And you hate the comparison is the thief of joy. But as McCourty said, Traylon Burks is further along than A.J. Brown was at this time with a similar skill set. And I know some of you guys just roll your eyes whenever the comparison is made. But that's the reality of the world that we're living in, whether you want to believe it or not. Traylon Burks is going to be compared to A.J. Brown. And while it may be in a rocky start for Traylon, training camp, I mean, it's a better start. He's showing out earlier. And if he stays in shape, and he really is fully dedicated. 
I mean, the sky's the limit at this point. If this guy's balling out like this, and think about this, going against the Titans' defense every day, who all of you guys tell me is going to be top five, top three in the NFL. So if Burks as a rookie in training camp is doing this, boy, I am ready for the season. But the guy that's been battling him the entire time in camp, purposefully lining up the matchup, starting one-on-ones with the matchup. Whole team crowded around to watch the matchup. Traylon versus Roger McCreary. Roger has been incredible. I, I talked about it a little bit yesterday, but Shane Bowen, the Titans defensive coordinator, the Titans don't give praise to players like this. They don't do this. He said this guy's not a rookie. He doesn't make the same mistakes twice. He knows what he's doing. He's sticky in coverage. He battles. He corrects. He adjusts. He has makeup speed. He's physical at the catch point. He gets hands on you. Watching that rep between Traylon and Roger yesterday. Woo! Man. If I could yell right now, I would. Because it gets you that excited to watch those two go at it. I mean, those two guys right there, McCreary and Burks, have a real chance to be absolute foundation pieces for the Titans. And I want to say one last thing about McCreary. We've talked a ton about how quickly he can take over in the slot, whether he's going to be the passing down slot, blah, blah, blah. But I know we don't want to talk about it, but if for some reason Caleb Farley just doesn't live up to it, while it would suck, I'm starting to feel less concerned because you got McCreary who clearly, shout out to you, Mike, can play inside and outside. So, again, the draft class in itself has had the best start of any draft class we've seen in John Robinson's tenure that I can recall back as far as we're going. And not only that, but the top two picks look like certified starters. Immediately. Immediately. And when you think about everything that we've gone through with, you know, Jeff turned into Jeff, but he didn't play first six weeks of the season. And in 2020, the Isaiah Wilson debacle, Christian Fulton barely played in 2020 because of injuries. You you think about 2021, Farley barely played, and it was a very rocky first year for Farley, even when he was healthy. Dylan Radins was inactive some weeks as a second-round pick. So you're telling me with all of that history that these guys are coming in here and looking like starters from day one in training camp? I mean, this is something to get excited about. This is something to be hype about, folks. So keep your wits about you, of course. But I'm giving you full permission to throw that party right now. Those dudes... And even if they aren't all-stars, pro bowlers, whatever, in their rookie year, they're going to be contributors. And that is a breath of fresh air for Titans fans, considering what we've gone through in the last few years. But with that being said, I want to talk about the other rookies. We're going to talk Malik Willis, Nicholas petit Ferrer, Che Conquo, Kyle Phillips, and then we'll round out the show talking about Hassan Haskins, Theo Jackson, and Chance Campbell. A full breakdown of training camp so far for all of the Titans rookies on today's show. We'll continue that before we do. I want to tell you guys about the best protein bars in the galaxy from our friends over at Built Bar. You want the best of both worlds with your protein bar. It's a protein bar. It's got to be healthy. Well, with Built Bar, low calorie, low sugar, high protein, high fiber. But most protein bars that you're going to get those health benefits with are chalky. They're waxy. They're hard to choke down. They're crumbly. I mean, it's just not an enjoyable experience to eat them, even though you know that you're being healthy. Well, Bill Bar is covered in 100% chocolate. They have a ton of delicious flavors. Uh, the Cookie Dough Chunk Puffs is the hot flavor right now. You get the chunk, so you get some crunch. You get the puff, so you get some marshmallowy consistency. Cookie Dough is an excellent flavor. Go to Bill Bar right now. It's built.com, B U. ILT.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15. You're going to get 15% off your order. And not only that, you're going to thank me 
after you do it. So once again, go to built.com, use promo code LOCK15 for the best protein bars of all time, Built Bar. All right, Titans fans, we are going to continue today's breakdown of the Tennessee Titans rookie class so far. The most optimistic that I've been about a rookie class in the John Robinson era, quite frankly, at this stage, at this stage. We talked Burks and McCreary because they're clearly the two standouts, and they should be. They're the two first-round picks. For once, for once, the Titans rookies are doing what we hoped. For once, early, it feels good. It feels so, so good. But it's not just McCreary and Burks. There are some other guys who have been very, very impressive. We're going to get into that before we do. want to thank you guys again for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. The Titans will be back at practice on Thursday. I will cap off the week of Locked On Titans, breaking down that practice, and then looking forward as the intensity starts to increase even more as we get further into August, closer to joint practices, closer to preseason games, closer to NFL kickoff. It has arrived. Whoa, so excited. Still can't yell, but you can feel the excitement. All right, so Malik Willis, let's start there. I think that unless you were someone who was overly over the moon optimistic about Malik, which You guys exist. You guys do exist. Unless you're somebody who had improper expectations, in my opinion, you you can't be upset with what Malik has done so far. What you wanted to see from Malik, improve with the operational side of things, in the huddle, at the line of scrimmage, audibling, change in formation, calling players in motion, reading the defense pre-snap, all of those things. Those are the things that we needed Malik to work on most. Well, according to an article from Jim Wyatt, according to comments from the coaching staff, according to comments from Malik, he has improved mightily in those areas. He said he's light years ahead right now of where he was when he came in. And that lines up with what we heard in the early offseason activities where the coaching staff talked, Pat O'Hara talked about Malik being a quick learner. And that's going to be important. So, that's all good stuff. The organizational, the operational things that Malik really needed to work on. Now, the next part of that is fundamentals and technique. His throwing motion needed to be shortened, needed to be corrected. His footwork could be lazy at times. And I don't even think that it's laziness like he doesn't know. I think that maybe he just didn't know what to do with his footwork. and. This is something that I I believe Todd Downing talked about earlier this week. It could have been one of the position coaches, but basically said that, you know, Malik survived off natural talent for so long, and that's not going to get it done at the NFL level. So the windows are tighter. The timing has to be proper. And Malik talked about himself tying the timing of the route, tying his eyes and where he wants to go with his feet. That all has to be tied together or your accuracy will fail. And he's seen a lot of coverages and things for the first time. He came from Liberty. They're definitely running more complex coverages in the NFL. So while it hasn't all been incredible, he hasn't, you know, set training camp on fire and wow, how are we going to keep this guy off the field? No, it hasn't been that. He's had his ups and downs. But the, the trajectory that he needs to be on and the path that he needs to follow is on schedule. So that's all you can ask for at this moment in time. Nobody with proper expectations expected Malik Willis to play this season. So I just don't see how you could have any negative feelings about what Malik has done so far. Hasn't been perfect, but he's getting better at the things that we all agreed he had to get better at before he could ever touch a football field. So that that's kind of, and when I talked about his expectations last week, I said, I just want him to know the operational things well enough to where he can get out in the preseason and make some plays and get some confidence. So I'm happy 
with what's going on with Malik. Nicholas Petit for rare. Not a ton of info about MPF. That's just what it is. But one thing I do want to point out is a story that was told by one of the coaches where Taylor Lewan got banged up for a second. No big deal. He came back later. But Lewan got banged up. And this goes back to our conversation about reps and the order in which the players are in line and how that does represent a hierarchy on the team. And that's why Kevin Byard's telling Roger McCreary, get your butt up further in line. You're important to this team. Quit hanging behind these veterans who maybe have been in the league for a year or two, but you're way better than, like Chris Jackson. Roger McCreary needs to be in line before Chris Jackson. Okay? So there's an example for you. And the point is, take the bull by the horns. Don't wait to be told to get up in line. Go get it. Go grab the reps. Well, that's what MPF did. Taylor One got banged up a little bit in a team activity. MPF just went straight up. That's walked straight up there. I'm going to take that spot right now. He didn't get asked by the coaches, hey, MPF, get it. No, he said, I'm going to take those reps because they're mine. I'm the backup left tackle. Again, nobody expected NPF to start this year. So to see that and that mentality is beautiful stuff. And hopefully he's ready to play a starting role maybe next year. The Titans want to move on from Lawan and kick Ravens over to left tackle. Maybe the year after that even. That's okay. No rush. What I like is, we all know, guys, that injuries are going to happen. And you got a guy like NPF, and I think it gives you valuable depth. And to hear him jumping in, ready to take the opportunity, it makes me feel confident that he'll be ready if he does have to play due to injury in the season. So that's important. Finally, two guys, pass catchers. Chickaconquo, he's just going to have a major role this year. Everybody who talks about Chig hypes him up. I mean, he catches passes every day from Ryan Tannehill, which means that he's working with the first team. Austin Hooper is talking about how big of a help that he could be. I even saw Chickaconquo ahead of Jeff Swain in some drill lines. Chig's going to make an impact in year one. We are going to get Chiggy with it, folks. So be ready for that. And Kyle Phillips, while it's been reported that he hasn't really made a big impact in team activities, it's more one-on-ones, which a guy his size, I expect that. He did get first team reps on Tuesday in the slot for the first time. Again, these rookies are going to contribute year one. I just got to say this before we move to the late round rookies. When Tampa Bay won their Super Bowl, what was one of the main reasons they won other than having the best player of all time show up? It was their rookie class. Tristan Wirfs, Antoine Winfield Jr. They were awesome. The boost that a team can get from an excellent rookie class on cheap contracts to come in right away and be contributors, it can take a team from 10-7 and and winning the division but maybe losing in the first round of the playoffs to an AFC championship game and a 12-win season. And if that happens, everything's on the table at that point. So, I know I'm getting overly hyped, but how could you not with what this rookie class is doing? Either way, we're going to move to Hassan Haskins, Theo Jackson, and Chance Campbell. Before we do, I do want to tell you guys uh, about today's title sponsor, BetterHelp. So, I'm just going to be honest with you guys. When I saw this opportunity that we were partnering with BetterHelp, I wanted to take advantage as well. So BetterHelp therapy online. They're going to assess your needs, match you perfectly with a licensed professional therapist. We all have curveballs that come to us in life. We all have things we're dealing with from our past. I really went into, you know, detail yesterday about things that bother bother me from my past and how I felt that better help is something that can help me. It's in the name, better help. So I just want you guys to know you don't have to do it alone. 
No, it's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's literally professional therapy done securely online, and it's available to people worldwide. So just make sure you visit their website. You can even read the testimonials that they post on there daily. That Help yourself, guys. Be the best to you. Right now, they have a special offer for my listeners. You can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. That's 10% off your first month of online therapy at BetterHelp. That's better, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. Titans fans, we are going to cap off today's rookie recap edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. We talked about Burks, McCreary, Malik, NPF, Chig, Kyle Phillips. Now I want to talk some Hassan Haskins, Theo Jackson, and Chance Campbell. I've gotten significantly less pub than everybody else, but we're going to dive into that before we do. I want to thank you guys again for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. As for your second listen, make sure you check out the Locked On NFL podcast. It's free and available on all platforms. You get your Titans news here with me every day. Get all your national NFL news with the Locked On NFL podcast. Check out the Locked On NFL YouTube channel. I host the Thursday show, so I'm going to be hosting the show today for you podcast people, tomorrow for you YouTube people. Um, And I would appreciate your support if you went over there and subscribed. But either way, let's dive back into this rookie class. Want to talk about Hassan Haskins and what an opportunity Haskins has here. Derrick Henry isn't and shouldn't be participating in team drills. Just not, just not doing it. Working individual, but not in those full go team periods. Good. He's got enough tread on the tires. He knows what he's doing. There's no need. So if Derrick Henry is not getting the first team reps at running back, then who is? Well, of course, you got your Dontrell Hilliard reps because he is the third down back for the Titans. But the Titans don't need a third down back every rep. So who are they going with? Hassan Haskins, the rookie. And all reports indicate that while Hassan was doing well early, it wasn't really noticeable until the pads came on. Which makes sense because Haskins is a physical, tough, downhill bruiser. The guy scored 25 touchdowns in college last year. When everyone knew that they were going to run, he still ran it down their throats. I'm a Buckeyes fan from Ohio. I watched that dude take Ohio State's soul. It hurt. still hurts. But God, I'm happy to have him on the team. Yesterday, he broke off a big run, had Taylor Lewan cheering, calling him a Michigan boy, all that stuff. And it's been reported that since the pads came on, he has been noticeable. And you're seeing his ability as a runner. It's so important that the Titans have somebody like that. You cannot give Derrick Henry 30 carries a game again. You can't. They have to find somebody to spell him who can run as physically. They have to. And someone who doesn't cost $2 million, like Deontay Foreman. Get out of here with that. It's way overpriced. So, you got a rookie, late rounder, with those characteristics. Oh, man, I'm excited to watch Hassan Haskins run in the preseason. It's going to tank some dudes. It is going to be awesome. So, Although there hasn't been a ton of buzz about Haskins because it's much more fun to talk about Burks and McCreary and and Chig and Phillips and people who catch the ball, and you could see that. The only real reps that would matter for a running back are the team reps, and we're not going to get a ton of that information. But what we have got indicates that since they put the pads on, he has been a noticeable guy, and that's exactly what you want to hear from a guy who plays football the way that Haskins does. So... Very excited to see Haskins in the preseason. I think he can take five to eight carries a game and really make an impact for the Titans and not only an impact in terms of being productive, but impact in terms of spelling Derrick Henry as well. That's very important. 
Outside of Haskins, you have Theo Jackson. And other than seeing some one-on-ones, I would say Theo Jackson is the rookie we've heard the least about. Now, you could take that as a good or a bad thing. But all I know for certain is, Elijah Molden's hurt. And we all talked that the expectation would be Roger McCreary is the passing down slot cornerback. Molden would then take over the Dane Crookshank role as the tight end stopper and the sub-package linebacker. Well, if Molden's hurt, that means McCreary is going to be the full-time slot, which means a ton of opportunities as the sub-package linebacker and tight end stopper for Theo Jackson. So hopefully we get some reports soon, but all I know for certain is Theo Jackson is getting opportunities. He's getting a ton of reps right now, and I sure hope that he's finding a way to take advantage. Lastly, we have Chance Campbell, who was called a tackling machine by the coaching staff earlier this week. Now, I do want to say that intel that I've seen and reporting that I've seen indicates that a guy like Dylan Cole and a guy like Joe Jones are still ahead of Chance Campbell in terms of the pecking order. But I do think that it's very possible, especially with Monty Rice being hurt, that the Titans, if Monty Rice continues to be hurt, maybe he goes on PUP at the beginning of the season, what what have you, I don't know. But I think if that continues to be the case, it gives Chance Campbell an even better chance to make the roster because I don't think that Joe Jones and Dylan Cole should make the roster. They're both guys who can help on special teams who aren't necessarily great linebackers. I think that Chance Campbell is a good linebacker, better than Joe Jones and Dylan Cole at the actual defensive position, even if he's not as up to speed on special teams and as good as them there. So what you do is you take one of Joe Jones and Dylan Cole to be that special teams linebacker, and then you keep Chance Campbell around. So you have another guy who's actually good at playing linebacker behind Cunningham, behind David Long with Monty Rice Hurt. Now, Monty Rice comes back in time, and he's healthy going into the season, and he plays in preseason games, and you feel comfortable there, then yeah, maybe maybe you go with two special teams linebackers at the end because you got three linebackers who can actually play linebacker. But Monty Rice isn't playing yet. So right now, Chance Campbell better take advantage of the extra opportunities. Coaching staff seems to be happy with what he's doing. I think he makes the team. I think it would be a worthy investment because I think he'd be scooped up on someone else's practice squad if they let him go with the cut down from 80 to 53. So that is a full recap of each rookie throughout training camp. So far, again, the Titans practice again on Thursday. I'll be here to break it down with you guys on Thursday night or Friday morning for the podcast crowd. But that's going to do it for me today, folks. Oh, wait, 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 wait. One more thing. The Titans signed uh, Willie Wright, an offensive lineman. Uh, undrafted free agent, originally out of Tulsa, spent some time with the Browns. I think he was on the Falcons. Um, I think the Bears, too, from the tweet I read from Justin Milo, I think. Uh, so, Daniel Murner got hurt in practice yesterday. I don't mean to be rude, but give somebody else a chance. We know Daniel Murner is mid. Daniel Midner. He's awful. He already had bad snaps in practice after bad snaps last year. I don't want to be rude, but if he's got to get injured to get him the heck off our team, then so be it. The dude doesn't deserve any more chances. He's garbage. Let one of the, just get anybody else, anybody else, give him a shot to see if they're better than him. It's a waste of a a roster spot, even if it's just training camp. The new roster pirate, Daniel Murner. Not than personal, but as a football player, he sucks. He's not an NFL player. So, yeah, sure, Willie Wright, get a chance, whatever it takes. Either way, that's going to do it for me today, though, folks. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Titans.